is its source. God is the source of everything. What part does reason play? Reason plays an enormous uh, uh, role. I could tell you a small anecdote. Uh, during the last war, the Second World War, I was interned in India as an enemy alien because at that time I still had my Austrian passport. And uh, there happened to be in the camp a group of German Jesuits. And as you know, Jesuits are the most highly educated of all Catholic priests. So as I was the only Muslim there, and they were people who were religiously inclined, and thousands of people around us who didn't care either way of, about anything of these things. So we were in permanent contact with each other. And they were intellectuals also. One could talk about things with them. And their leader was one, uh, a Bavarian, Prince Löwenstein, very, uh, very aristocratic old family and very edu well educated. And one day he told me, you see, Assad, it is a very strange thing. You were a Jew. For you, the logical thing would have been to become a Christian. <laughs> Why did you jump to Islam? So I say, I will tell you this. And before I tell you it, I promise you one thing. Not everything is lost from your point of view. I am prepared to become a Christian today provided you answer me one question satisfactorily. And if you do, you can take me next Sunday to the chapel tent and baptize me publicly, and I will accept it. He said, strange, what is the question? So as I tell you, uh, I asked him, could you explain to me the Trinity? <laughs> so he said, you see, I said, this is a mystery, I mean, we spoke German, mysterium, mm -hmm. which has a slightly different meaning than mystery in English. This is a mysterium. When you achieve faith, your heart will make you understand that. So I said, that was the reason why I became a, become a Muslim. <laughs> you tell me, gain faith, and then you will understand. My religion tells me, Use your reason, and you will gain faith. Ah, yes. And so he gave it up, and I didn't <laughs> become a Christian. Oh, my. Mm -hmm. mm. So this is, you ask me what, re, uh, what role the reason plays. The reason plays an enormous role. Of course, the reason doesn't answer everything. Uh, I mean, science has a tremendous role in Islam, as you know, knowledge in general is striving after knowledge is the duty of every Muslim, man, woman. And, uh, but science as such does not solve every problem. Science can only judge, calculate, uh, connect fragments which are visible or measurable mm. and cannot give you the insight into the deepest reality. That can only come through faith. So men may never find truth through scientific reasoning? Isn't true, the science helps, but it's not the only way. And there is in the Quran a lot that uh, uh, confirms science. I wouldn't say the science confirms the Quran, mm. but on the other hand, there is a lot in the Quran that relates to science. For example, uh, the statement, we have created every living being out of water. And the science of biology tells you that water is the source of uh, every living being and uh, every living cell. So this is also one of such evidences that the Quran is an inspired book that shows realities which neither uh, of this the Sahaba, the Sahaba could not understand. Omar ibn al-Khattab could not understand what it means. We have created every living thing out of water. We can understand it, not by our own merit, but simply because 
Many generations of people have worked on this problem. Are these the kinds of things that separate the Quran from other scriptures? You see, the other scriptures are of, there are several kinds. Now, for example, the Bible, especially the Old Testament, is not so much a religious teaching as the history of the Jewish people, written by themselves or corrected by themselves. Or it is very difficult to say what it is. The, uh, the same thing also about the Gospels. The Gospels are a uh, description, real or uh, post factum, of the life of Jesus and his teachings, reproduce his teachings. But none of them has the authenticity of the Quran. The Quran is the only one which is not a, neither a history nor a book of science nor uh, a book of history, but a teaching of how to achieve the good life in the spiritual sense and material sense, social sense. The good life sounds very Jewish. <laughs> yes, good yes, life in the yes. real sense. In the real sense, yes. And uh, the Koran is the only book, only work, uh, which has existed and changed for 14 centuries without without any letter to be changed in it. It is exactly that Quran which has been revealed to the Prophet. Mr. Assad, you described for, uh, for our viewing audience a concept of Christian, the God in Christianity, a concept of God in Judaism. There must have been a time in your life when you felt the omnipotence of God. Well, I described that also in this book, The Road to Mecca, in the first chapter, when I uh, uh, speak of having lost my way in the desert, in the northern desert in Saudi Arabia, and almost died of thirst. And then I was found by people and rescued, and I had suddenly the feeling that nothing can really happen to me, that whatever happens to me is part of uh, an entity decreed by God. I am part, an insignificant part, but because I am a part of this entity, I am a necessary part. And that gives me a feel, gave me a feeling of pride, of being a necessary element in God's creation. And I think that the essence of every really true religious feeling is that, that one feels oneself as necessary from, uh, I wouldn't say from God's point of view, but necessary within the concept of creation as such. Otherwise, I would not have been created if I had not been necessary. <coughs> thus, that gave me a very deep feeling of security, that nothing can happen to me. Whatever happens is part of my life and my existence. Death can be so imminent in the desert. What about man's unity with God? No, I didn't mean unity with God. Unity mm -hmm. in God's, within God's creation. creation. The unity with God is a, is a very abstract concept which I cannot grasp at all. God cannot be grasped. How can I speak of being unity, of having unity with God? It is, of course, a, a mystic concept, a Sufi concept, the unity of God, but I cannot, I cannot grasp it. I can say only unity vi within God's creation, with God's creation. What about man's responsibility? Did you feel that? Yes, very much so. Freedom of will, I believe, there is of course a very difficult, almost an unanswerable problem. The problem of free will, which is stressed in the Quran uh, many times, because without free will, there is no doing good and doing evil. On the other hand, God is omniscient. God knows what will happen. Therefore, it has to happen as God knows it. 
how does that agree with the concept of free will? And this is precisely a problem which human beings cannot answer. We can, the best we can do is to try to live up to the idea that uh, we have free will and that whatever happens is known to God. More than that, our brain cannot conceive. There are many things, by the way, which we accept as axioms without understanding them intellectually. Take, for example, a small mathematical uh, axiom. Two parallel lines meet in infinity. Now, what infinity is, how infinity is, no human brain can visualize. Nevertheless, every human brain, every mature human brain, accepts this as an absolute mathematical truth and therefore truth in itself. We must accept it, that there are truths which our construction, the construction of our brain does not answer. I think we should stop now for tea, don't you? Yes, <laughs> I think you should think. Also. We'll come yeah. back for it.